Hi there everyone, Russ Douglas 232 again, back in the man cave, and uh, show you Bruce in a second. Thanks for watching, this is our first impressions of the brand new PARD DS35 Day Dusk Night Scope, and a uh, serious piece of kit. Without further ado, here's the scope with the objective cap closed, but the aperture within it open. And you, and you can open and close this little... Yep, aperture. which is amazing. Wait till you see the full review for more on that. And then, of course, you can open the complete lens cap. Yeah, and it clicks back. So it does. I never noticed that. Brilliant. That's better. Yep. Less chance of it getting broken. Yep. So we have the laser rangefinder on the left. We have the IR illuminator, and that focuses or spreads, and it also is directable. So you can slacken this off, and you can. Yep and you can aim it and then lock it. We have a 30 millimeter body. This is the side it doesn't move. Right, the, the side with pad is locked, so that's just inanimate. The other turret on the right hand side, the windage turret, what would traditionally be, this that the houses your 186650 battery. Um, yep, okay, and it takes flat tops or pinheads, we just discovered, but not protected batteries. Yep. It won't fit the protected ones. So it'll take these yeah, pinhead take take both, both of these. So the top turret zooms in and zooms out, and get you into, into the menu and allows you to change stuff. Yep, absolutely. And we have three buttons at the back. You've got the power button. The rearmost button is short press for range finding. And again, for the ballistic calculator, would be a second press. And again for off. Yep. yep. And then a long press switches the Wi Fi on and off. In front of that, you've got the button for recording and taking stills. A long press switches between stills and recording. And then whichever you have it on, a short press takes stills or starts and stops recording. And the other side of that button is, is from day mode, night mode, and yep. when you're in night mode, it switches the IR power up. Yep. One, two, three off, one, two, three off. We should also point out that this is your focus control, big nice throw lever for focusing yep. the objective lens. And I'm impressed. I'm not going to beat about the bush here. Yep. This is very, very impressive, I have to say. We've had it alongside a couple of other scopes today. We had it alongside an 08 SLRF, alongside a HIC Micro, and the image is very, very it's, in daylight, it was the best of the three. So we've made a wee list of things that we like about it. We'll just shoot through them very quickly. This is hopefully going to be a five minute this, video. Yeah, this is going to be extended, but the first thing we really like about this is the weight. It's very light. With a battery fitted, it's only 850 grams, yeah. which is way lighter than a lot, most of those. The overall image quality is very good. Nice, bright, clear, smooth image. Not really any digital noise that we could pick up. Noticeably less no digital noise than some others we looked yeah. at. The focus free bit at the front. I mean, it's 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 an old photography trick. You know, reduce the aperture, increases the depth of field. So you can call it focus free, but it works really, really well. Yeah. Um, we had we had this focused from about. Would we say 12 meters out to 180 yeah. without having to change focus and it'll probably do more than that that yeah. was just the, the limits that we were able to get yeah. to these are just kind of random thoughts we like the the range finder in that it's a horizontal flash yeah as opposed to a vertical flash we love the circular screen yes that's the, one the, of the best the, things about this circular display is absolutely terrific yeah there's no aberration you can actually no. move your your eye left right yeah. up and down yeah. And there's no distortion, there's no fisheye, there's no, no there's no parallax. No, no. It's no, fantastic. Absolutely. Whether that's part of the design, you've got this very long eye relief. Yes. So that we we typically don't use the rubber eye cups, but with this one, your eye is in a perfect position to see all of the screen and just a little bit around the outside more than that, with your eye just touching the just eye. Just touching cup. it. And it's it's lovely. It's really comfortable to set up for. Yeah. On a lot of scopes with digital screens, you're having to push your eye right in yeah. to, to be able to see the corners of the display. Yeah. It doesn't happen with this. When I saw the photographs of this thing first, and I saw this is a bit we're calling the Starship Enterprise, by the way. I was a bit concerned about this, looking, oh my God, somebody's going to break that. But if you look at the thickness of the material, it's tough. Yeah, it's well built, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. I, I've no doubt some, some Muppet with a, with a big hammer will do some damage to it, but I think for most... Vaguely sensible people, they're not going, you're not going to break this. No. Yeah, you're not going to break this. And the more I look at it, the more I like the solution because it keeps the weight down. Uh, it's not stuff hanging off the side. 
if you really felt the need to have an external IR, well, you've got space to do that yeah. without any major issues. So, yeah. uh, for me, it's a pretty good solution. On the turret itself, it's nice. They're just just the right level of friction. There's not a little too, bit of resistance, yeah. A, not too easy to turn. You're, you're not going to turn this when you don't mean to turn it. No. Yeah. So that's good. This side cap doesn't move. Yeah. So the, if you see par, don't take a wrench and try and unscrew it because it's not designed to move. That's actually no. the other end of the battery. No. That's a lot of diopter adjustment. Yes. Huge amount of diopter we got, adjustment. We got up to 40 mil. That's a, with that, when that's screwed in, that goes all the way back into there. Well, it goes flush or it comes all the way out to 40 millimeters. Yeah. And for my eyes, it's best at 32. And for, and for Bruce's, I, I can have it right out to 40. And, and so you can see from there, I've never seen as much diopter adjustment as that. Although no. that may have something to do with the type of screen they're using and the fact they're getting this huge long eye relief. Yeah. But we don't see any downside in that because although even if, even if I screw it all the way out, okay. it's still pretty rigid. Yeah, there's no it's no wobble. No. That's, um, that's really good, reassuring. And it's not, and I was worried about that. And it's not distorting or aberrate or, or aberring the display in any way at all. Yeah, cool. So, we're looking for things we don't like, and mechanically and physically, I'm not seeing anything. There's going to be always going to be some sort of software issues. Those yeah. things that people don't like, and yeah. well, the moment the only thing we've really found is that the Wi-Fi defaults to on. It's not easy to switch the Wi-Fi off. If the yeah. you switch on, the, the Wi-Fi comes on, and of course, yeah. that a drains bit. the juice a little bit. But that really was about the only thing yeah. we found. Yeah. Very briefly, the image shift zero. Yes. Where the reticle stays in the center of the screen. We did a quick calculation. We reckon we've got about plus or minus 20 MOA vertically and about plus or minus 100 MOA horizontally. So as long as your zero point is within those limits, the reticle will stay in the center of the screen. That, that's just a first cut at it, which, is, which means that the vast majority of people, the reticle will be in the center of the screen. Yeah, now, correct. we haven't really investigated the reticle styles and stuff yet. No. We've got a bit more, more to do with that. Yeah. That's a brilliant first test session with the PAD DS35. This is the 2K version with the 850mm IR and the laser rangefinder and the ballistic calculator. And a 70mm lens. Yes, 70mm focal length lens. It's an amazing piece of kit so far. Everything we've learned we love. Handy, lightweight, portable. The rubber eye cup works perfect so far. We're going to be going out tonight. The rain's going to ease off and we're going to be going out and test the IR on rabbits. But I'm going to edit this into a short video. And the other thing is, big thank you to Abu and the team at Sportsman Gun Centre for letting us have one of the two exclusive pucker copies in the country. Chris Parkin's got the other one. He'll be doing his own review. Official news for you, this goes live tomorrow, Thursday, and the PAD DS35 will be on sale at Sportsman Gun Centre from Saturday the 10th of December. So that's about two weeks away. Retail price... Eight four nine ninety nine. Yeah. I have to say, having done our tests, the air brick ninety eight yards away. I want one. I have to say, I want one. It's amazing. It's the much nuts. It really is. We've got lots more testing to do, and we will be, of course, be testing it tonight. And we'll I'll tag on our conclusions on this video from tonight's session. But today's recording and and testing, and tonight's will be in longer videos and footage from this scope and from two others we've simultaneously recorded on so keep watching and thank you for your attention hope it's been interesting cheers thanks bruce thanks ross thanks everyone thanks abu thank you abu awesome awesome stuff we were very impressed with the pad ds 35's nighttime capabilities last night it did slightly have the edge over the hike micro alpex a50t although of course the alpex has a lower base mag which gives you a wider angle for spotting when you drop it down to one times base mag loads of footage coming soon a direct comparative footage from the pad 8s lrf pad ds35 and the hype micro alpex you don't want to miss this